Hello all. I'm wondering how popular this video will be because I'm not sure how many people know that What If Season 2 is out, but I wanted to have a quick talk about it. There may be some mild spoilers, especially with one episode, but I'll try and keep them to a minimum. The first season was okay with a few standout episodes, but this one is quite flaccid by comparison. I'd say the balance is more to the negative than the positive. And honestly, I had to look up what the episodes were as I'd forgotten a few already. They're mostly distinctly average, nice animation, some nice action, but that's about it. Obviously, they're short form storytelling, so you have to give a bit of leeway, but it all feels half baked. Once again, it feels like there are some good ideas and they're screaming to get out. I get that sense a lot these days, like TV and films just don't reach their potential and end up feeling wholly underwhelming. And obviously, this is current day MCU, so six of the nine episodes are female centric. And somewhat with the first series, they also rely on multiple what-ifs to create the story. So we'll start at the very beginning, to quote a certain ex-nun. The first episode, what if Nebula joined the Nova Corps? Visually, certainly, this is a riff on Blade Runner. The imagery is nice, but the story doesn't really knit together and requires multiple jumps of logic. And that's not only because there are people in it that really shouldn't be there. It's fine, but falls apart with some of the decisions made in the narrative. The second, what if Peter Quill attacked Earth's Mightiest Heroes? That was okay. It has some good action and an introduction to 90s heroes, one of which, previously teased, was cool to see, and one, a gender-swapped character, was just annoying. So in fairness, I had to kind of blank that out to enjoy the episode. Episode 3 was What If Happy Hogan Saved Christmas? This was just a dumb, forgettable comedy episode. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with it, but honestly, it kind of bored me. I felt the same about episode four, what if Iron Man crashed into the Grand Master. It was just a bit uninspired and dull. I kind of know what they were going for, but it was a convoluted and disappointing explanation of how Tony and Gamora from the last two episodes of season one met. It didn't really hold my attention and again leaned into the wacky of Thor Ragnarok, which really, really isn't a plus for me. Episode five, what if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? Now we all know Captain Carter was going to be back, and he's basically a reworking of the Winter Soldier. I will say though, Peggy Carter is the only real standout character of this series, possibly because of Hayley Atwell's performance, similar as she is in the live action films. And it also seems like they know it, as she's in a couple more episodes. Again, an okay episode which suffers from being a copy of something better. Now we get on to episode 6, and it kind of irritated me. What if Kahori reshaped the world? One of the arguments that I and others make about inherent characteristic swapping, other than they should use one of the amazing diverse characters that already exist, is make a new one. And this episode does that, but it feels out of place. Now for me, What If is about taking characters we know and changing their path, not ignoring all of that to introduce a new diverse female character. It just doesn't seem to fit with the ethos of the idea. Anyway, sadly she suffers from the flaws of the other ones. She's instantly great at everything. She's the bravest and most noble, obviously. And the story is the trope of the peaceful, noble Native American against the white colonizer. I mean, it happened, so there's nothing really wrong in telling that story, except it's obvious. But there is some moral ambiguity here for me. After she's murdered a defeated and helpless enemy, there's a speech about how heroic she is, which really didn't sit right. And shortly thereafter, she's commended for achieving world peace. But world peace is achieved at the barrel of the gun. And that's tyranny. It just felt morally incongruous. Finally, it was all in indigenous languages rather than English, so had subtitles. Now I've got no problem with subtitles, but it just felt a bit pretentious and a barrier to its accessibility. Kudos to them for trying to introduce a new character, but obviously it was yet another super powerful woman with all the bad tropes so sadly common these days. I found episode 7 irritating too. What if Hela found the Ten Rings? Not specifically because it's female centric, although I found the main character just annoying, but because it's a redemptive story for Hela, who obviously becomes the bestest ever, and it echoes the first Thor movie. But for me, this story didn't hang together. Hela isn't Thor. She's inherently evil. 
but for some reason the teachings of a saintly woman makes her realise it was all the fault of the patriarchy. So no journey of self-discovery, just the decision that it's all someone else's fault. I quite liked episode 8, What If the Avengers Assembled in 1602. It kind of reflects a Neil Gaiman comic series. And I've always liked Heroes Out of Time story. And this one again features Peggy and alternate versions of the Avengers. Without the one Avenger who might actually be fitting to the era, Hawkeye. There are some uncharacteristic actions highlighted by a dumb resolution which again had a questionable morality. Especially from one character who's known for their impeccable morals. It kind of marred the ending for me. So, on to the final episode, which was, for the most part, a jumble of member berries. What if Strange Supreme intervened? It again features Peggy and Kahori, of course, though she's much more likeable in this episode. Strange given that, for her, this follows from the end of episode 6. Obviously, the episode is yay women, but you're not beaten about the face with it, and as long as you don't think too deeply, it's mainly just two female heroes who find themselves in a situation. And it's not a situation they overcome quickly or easily. It's a lot of flash and bang, but very thin plot-wise, and a little underwhelming for a final episode, though that may be because of my expectations following season 1's two-parter. It also relies on retconning and character story art, which I really didn't like, but I'd say it was one of the more enjoyable episodes. So overall, it's pretty forgettable fair. Standard MCU these days, unfortunately. Were you one of the handful of people who watched this show, and what did you think? Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and peace out.